you better watch the damned. They're going to break the cha their chains. No, you can't stop them. They're coming to get you, and then you'll get your balls to the wall, man. <laughs> yeah, you better watch those damned. You've been keeping them down for too long, and they are not happy about it. And they will break those chains, and you can't stop them. And they're coming to get your ass. All right. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is the Balls to the Wall show right, right here on a Friday night, the first Friday of 2020. Yes, indeed. Welcome to, to you all. Happy, happy, happy new year. It's a new year. Everything's new. Everything's different. Everything's fresh and clean and starting all over again. Yep. Um, <laughs> so... Uh, welcome to it. Moose Girl's out on the town tonight, so uh, it's just me here with y'all, with y'all, and uh, it's it's a balls to the wall type night. So uh, hopefully uh, you're ready for all of that. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. What was I going to tell you? Oh, it's January third, two thousand twenty. January third, uh, two thousand twenty, and we are live right here on RealLibertyMedia dot com on the Freakers Ball Show page or. Vaughn dot live slash real liberty media for the video stream there. Also, we are on the audio stream all over the place on RLMRadio.xyz or on real liberty media dot com. Also, over there on freedoms network dot com, real liberty dot org, tune in, internet radio, shoutcast, blah blah blah, on and on. That we're, we're out there, we're in, we're in, we're in, we're in spots and spaces and places that you might imagine. Uh, it's, it's kind of a light crowd over here tonight in the uh. In the, in the Real Liberty Media chat here on Freenode. But uh, that's all right. You know, people got stuff to do. I, I don't know what it is, but some people got stuff to do. And also our buddy Vinny and his two Nicks are not here because his computer broke down. Uh, I see Flash and Cirque are not in the list because, well, they're sleeping. <laughs> All right, but anyway, say hi and howdy to the bots and bodies that are here, uh, which is the barman, my, my mighty bot, uh, Mr. Beetle and Cowboy Tech. Hey, come on! Myself and uh, the Moose Girl. The Moose Girl's here. She's just not here, you know. We got the lovely, uh, awesome uh, Miss Kate, Mr. Anti and Asmodeus Asmo, Charles Sedoni, free enslaved in the fake trees of Florida. We got Miss Graham Z, uh, Java Doctor, the Java Doctor, who's just switched over to a wonderful VPN service, and he's still working out a few kinks there on that. I, I, I offered him help, but he has so far uh, to accept. Uh, we have the Poopster, who is formerly of the Power Hour, and the Prince, who is currently of the Power Hour, along with his new host, Zippix, who is down there at the bottom of the list. So, uh, yeah, those guys. Mr. Rob works. Hey, Rob, how's that bubble doing? Uh, we got Rome's, a.k.a. the Darth One. <laughs> Vanna White and Weather Dark, a couple of my other bots there. Uh, yeah, they're great bots. Uh, Phantom, CC66, Choskura, E-Man, and Siv. Hey, what's going on, Siv? End of. All right, Frumster, the Frumsty, the Canadian partner of ours. Gooberzilla, Goob, hey, Goob. <laughs> Grommet, JJ's, uh, SLC Mike, are you around, Mike? Hey, Mike, howdy, Mike, how you doing? Uh, Slim, Jim, Flim, uh, the smart ass bot of, uh, that belongs to Mr. Rob Works, the holiest of holy Rogers, and anybody else that may be around that I just don't get to see going on here in uh, the chat room. Yes, the Canuck from Canuckistan. <laughs> Now, before I get into it, into it, uh, into much, um, I, I just want to say I am considering a minor change to the Freakers Ball time schedule, um, and what that would be would be see right now we run from 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. Eastern time, which. I notice towards the end of the show, some of them East Coast folk uh, tend to drop off a little early because, well, it's 2 a.m. out there before it finishes all up, and and some of those people are, you know, they're tired. We're we're not we're not a young crowd here. <laughs> so 
So what I'm considering, and, and I got a couple few options here. Uh, the first one would be just to make it a two-hour show and run from nine uh, or uh, eleven to one. Uh, the other option would be to keep it at a three-hour show, but do it an hour earlier from eight uh, ten. <laughs> to, to 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 one instead. I, I I keep trying to go back to my time, which is nine o'clock here for me. I'm a little earlier. My, my for me it runs from nine to midnight, which is easier you know to handle. Um, uh, and the other option is just keep it how it is. So uh, if anybody's got any feedback on that, and of course I haven't talked with Moose Girl about this yet, so I I don't know what her view or opinion on this all will be. Uh, if if we do indeed do that, I mean we've been running uh, at at the 11 to 2 p.m. or 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. for what seven, eight, nine, ten years, something like that. Uh, I think we started off kind of open ended in the beginning, and and so it would just run however long it ran, um, and uh, and that was a little different. And then we decided. Uh, absolutely free and slave. Moose is the boss, and uh, I definitely need to check with her. But I'd like to get some feedback. Uh, you know, it'd be good to uh, uh, to come at her with some feedback. I, I don't know that it matters too much to her one way or the other, but uh, uh, we'll find out whenever I when I get an opportunity to speak with her about it. Uh, so anyway, it's just something I'm thinking about, something I'm considering. It's uh, not that big of a deal, really. Uh, minor, minor, minor change. Um, but uh, what my uh, my sole 2020 New Year's resolution this year was to get more sleep. And for me, <laughs> that means sleeping earlier or, uh, rather, rather than later. Um, and, and it's not going to be easy for me. I can tell you that already. Uh, I, I did that one, one night uh, a couple of nights ago uh, go to bed like 1030, which I haven't done in... A long time. Anyway, uh, but I didn't get to sleep until after midnight. So <laughs> just, just because I go to bed doesn't mean I'm going to get any more sleep. Um, <laughs> and I usually wind up getting to bed around too, uh, regardless. Um, so if I can make it, you know, a couple hours earlier, um, that's good. That's good. Uh, so uh, whatever works. But I think I think more sleep, and and I'm gonna wake up in the morning when when the light when it when the sun comes up. Generally speaking, unless it's an overcast day, uh, which like it was today, and and I and I I could it doesn't really get light in the morning. <laughs> so anyway, uh, but most most days it's not overcast, and, and it, so I'm gonna wake up uh, when it gets light. Uh, so anyway, it's just something to consider, something for people to think about. If you've got any feedback on the matter, uh, throw it at me, and, and I'd, I'd like to hear it. Um, let's see, what else is going on? Uh, it's 2020 now, and, um, well, there's a lot of things going on, but I'm not going to get in, in, into any of those just yet, um, <laughs> because, oh, man, I tell you, it's a crazy-ass world. It is. And, and and you watch the stuff that goes on out there, and it's like, holy hell, what what are these people? <sighs> yeah. So there's all that going on that in the world that's not here, that's not part of us, that has nothing to do with Real Liberty Media. That's the world out there. Those guys, them. And uh, so I, I don't know. Uh, well, even what to really, I do know what to say about it. And I'm going to tell you about it in a late, little later on. I don't have a, a link to cover what I'm going to talk to you about when I talk to you about it. Because I don't think there is a comprehensive link about all that. Hey, Rob Works, fired up the bubbler, man. All right. Uh, so <laughs> so I'll, I'll talk to you about all that. And I'm telling you, just because we saw what happened here, that does not mean uh, that well, they can write more than 2021 uh, free enslaved. Uh, uh, free enslaved is, is, is suggest or um, telling people uh, do not write 20 for the year on your checks if you write checks because people can add uh, a, make it 2021 through 2029. They can make it 2010 
from 20 to 2001 uh, through 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 2000 anything they want to um if it's just 20 that's that's good for the whole uh century <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be a little careful of that. <laughs> yeah, it's a, uh, and I, I don't know what the benefit would be. Um, collect interest. Yeah, I don't know about that stuff. I, I don't really know what the benefit would be, but I, I saw somebody else suggesting that. Uh, make sure you don't just put a twenty on there. And and why would you anyway? Just use the four four digits. Is it that much much extra effort? To write four digits and set it to. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean, if you write 2021, they could make it a 2024. I, I, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I know. Um, let's see, what else did I have to tell you about as far as websites and such things like that? I think we're pretty good. I think we're covered on that. Uh, next month, February, is the uh, donation drive month. So, all, everybody looking forward to that, I know. Uh, me coming on here and saying, give me your money. But that's next month. That's not this month. <laughs> so, hold back. Hold back, Jax. Um, <laughs> that, that'll come when it comes. All right, I think we're good with all the uh, intro, happy, happy, here we are type stuff. Uh, let's play some music. Uh, like I said, this is 2020 now. It's a, it's that whole New Year thing, and I, I think, I think. Oh yeah, by the way, I am using today, at least, if not forever, not well, not for the foreseeable future. Uh, I am using today a different browser rather than Firefox. I am using Brave, the Brave browser, uh, here to run the show. Um, I've been using Firefox for a long time, uh, but but the thing is. Uh, this morning, and I'm not even really sure what fired me off about it, uh, but I, I, I was, uh, Beth, Z, back when she was around, uh, told me about this browser called Dissenter. And and so I, I started playing with Dissenter, which Dissenter is essentially brave, but it's made by the people that run that Gab AI site. Um, and it, it's pretty good. It's actually a pretty good browser, but for whatever reason... I could not get my computer to be able to set it as default, uh, which I need to have it do that. Uh, n not really so much. I mean, I, there's a workaround that I can use, but uh, I didn't like that fact. Uh, so I fired up my Brave, which I hadn't used on this computer for a while. Uh, I use Brave on, on my Linux box. That's my primary browser over there. And, it's, yeah, it's an awesome browser. Um, it's, it's a great little browser. Um, anyway, so I fired up my Brave on here, and I said, oh, yeah, I've already set up most of this stuff on here. Most of the things that I, I normally do on Firefox were already all set up in Brave. So I said, all right, well, that's cool. Um, so I went through, and I set up a few other things that needed to be set up, because it looks like it must have been about a year since the last time I used Brave. Um, yeah, Brave's great. You know, it, it's a good it's a, it's a good uh, browser. Um it seems like it's a little bit lighter on resources than Firefox. Um, I don't know how it compares with that to Chrome. I have tried Vivaldi. I have a, I have the icon sitting right here. I got a ton of browsers sitting right here in front of my face, um, or the icons to launch them anyway. <laughs> but they are, but they're all on my computer here. I liked Vivaldi. It was all right. Um, it, it, you know, it had a little, it had some quirks last time I was using it. It, no, it's not a Tor browser. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, so not that it'll make any difference to you. You won't see a change, hopefully. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, I got Sea Monkey on here. I got Opera. I got the Vivaldi. I got Chrome Firefox. Uh, what's this one here? Waterfox. Uh, I, I got a ton of browsers, man. <laughs> All right, let's play some music. Let's get this stuff started off. Like I said, it's 2020. It's a new year. Things are fresh and clean and new. And so I think, I think, for whatever reason, don't ask me why, uh, but I think for whatever reason that this will be a, a healing year. So we'll start off with this, the first song from Freakers Balls to the Walls. 
John Hook, John Lee Hooker and Santana. Oh yeah, that's what we're talking about. A uh, Green Day to an American idiot. I don't want to be an American idiot. No, I don't. I don't. Uh, before that, we had uh, uh, Leo Maraccioli uh, doing It's the End of the World as We Know It. Maybe. It may be. Uh, so uh, thanks for that, Leo. Always thanks for your stuff. And we kicked it off there with John Lee Hooker and Carlos Santana uh, doing uh, The Healer. And, and and hey, good good news for y'all. Uh, yes, the Mighty Moose Girl will be joining us. Oh, shortly enough. Shortly enough. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that, uh, that's, that's going to be great to have her out here with us. I have uh, for you a, uh, well, um, my, my, my take, my take. Oh, that's a long one, ain't it? All right, I, I put the time in there. <laughs> yeah, I, I have uh, uh, my take on the whole thing. Well, the whole thing, as as I like to say it, uh, the um, the whole deal of what's going on in the world. Uh, as far as um, <laughs> this Iran thing, and I'm gonna I'm gonna explain it to you in a few minutes here. Uh, is well, that, that, this will be a long. That next set will be a long set. Okay, that's good. Uh, that's cool. We can do that. <laughs> Because you think, you look at it and you say, oh no, what's this new thing going on? Why, how has this happened? Well, it didn't just happen. Um, back in the day, oh, I don't know what year it was exactly, uh, sometime in the early 2000s, uh, the, the U.S. Uh, government, the uh, actually the Project for a New American Century, uh, they decided uh, that they, 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 we're going to take over a bunch of countries. And they started over there in Libya with Gaddafi. Uh, yeah, and, and uh, they, they did what they called a, a green revolution or a color revolution. And it worked. And, it, and it, wow, look at that, this worked. Uh, we, were, we were able to do this and get away with it. And then they tried to spread it off to other countries. And one of the countries they tried to spread it off to was Iran. They tried to do a green revolution in Iran, and it did not work. And so they kind of shifted their, their uh, thought patterns and said, well, we want Syria anyway. Let's go to Syria, and from Syria, we can hit up Iran. But it wasn't working, and so they, they started this group of people, uh, commonly known as ISIS, um, because... Uh, they they wanted to create a big new boogeyman since Bin Laden was out of the picture, more or less. They hadn't no officially uh, killed him yet, but they, you know, he'd been dead for a long time. But that that's a whole different story. So uh, so they wanted to, to to use Syria as a launching pad to get into Iran, but the problem was the problem was Russia. Russia wasn't going to let them go over and get in, uh, take over Syria in the first place, no less use Syria to get into Iran. So after a couple years of trying that and it not working for them, and then it kept on getting their ass kicked, even though they were funding and training and, uh, um, and, and supplying uh, all, all these people. Hang on a second. I'll get back into it. Hello? Hello? Miss girl. Hello. Oh, there you are. Cool. All right, here I am. Good. Okay, good. All right. Yeah, yeah. I agree with everything you're saying. All right. Well, let me continue. Yep. <laughs> All right. So, 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 since they couldn't get to Syria, I mean, get to get Syria, which would allow them to get into Iran, uh, because of Russia. They right. Said, they Who said, did not want Syria thing to happen? No. So they said, "Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to." We're going to go in and force Ukraine right. through financial force, uh, yes. through the IMF, uh, yep. uh, so that Russia will have to focus on on yep. U Ukraine, 
uh, ra- rather rather than fo- focusing on Syria, then once Russia's all focused up there, they won't be able to take Syria and land launch into Iran. However, right. Russia outsmarted them again, yep. and they, they they went to the people of Crimea and said, hey, yep. you guys want to be Russians? And they said, hell yeah, yeah. we do. Yeah, <laughs> we do. It was like we'll 90- be Russians, bitch. Yeah, we're better than being on Ukraine and being under the thumb of the IMF. So, right. uh, so, so that didn't work, and and and, nope. and, and they got pissed off uh, about that, and, and so they've been trying to say all yep. time, all along that Russia annexed Crimea, which they didn't do. No, <laughs> they did not. They did not do. But then, while they were over there in Ukraine, they started up all this other nonsense, um, which you hear about now going on. Yep. Um, not exactly. just not just with the Bidens and the Clintons, uh, but w- but with now with with the Trump thing. So uh, that's a whole different mess. A whole different. It's not connected. The only reason it's connected is because they've allowed because Ukraine allowed itself. Well, it was already probably right. it was already corrupt, but as they allowed themselves yeah. to become more corrupt and 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 fold under the pressure of the IMF. So that happened. So. Now they they tried to go back through Syria. That's you hear about that Benghazi deal. They, yep. they, they tried to go back through through to into Syria right. using Libya, which they already forced. Right, they already fucked that all up. Yeah, which, they, that was a fucking deal. Yeah. Yep. And, and so and so they they were running guns uh, uh, through Libya over into Turkey and up on into right. Ukraine, so they could so they could arm up their militants. They called ISIS, which is the big boogeyman, which big is big fucking. ISIS is CIA created. Right, right. It's it's their boogeyman. So, yeah. but they want you to. They think. have to create their own boogeyman because <laughs> they they make them up. Right, uh, but but so when 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 Syria and Russia together kicked kicked uh, ISIS's ass and kicked right. them on out of there, then they kicked had their fucking ass. <laughs> they had to come up with a new methodology. Yep, <laughs> they're like, oh fuck, that didn't work. Now what? And then, and then this recent thing with Turkey. Uh, oh my God! Uh, it's crazy. Saying, we're going to take over the the Kurdish section of of uh, Syria, and, and we don't really need the yeah. United States in there. The United States uh, said, "Okay, we're going to back out." And then they said, "Oh well, we're not really backing out. We're back. We're we're gonna we're gonna keep all these oil wells, all, all this oil territory." Right. Which yeah, is, you know, they don't ever back out of anything. Which I mean, which that's that's like. Oh. High criminality going on there. Oh, big time, yeah. big uh, time corruption. Anyway, big time. So um, all across the board. Now this he new was hit on on the Iran just recently. The general, right, right. That was unprovoked. Okay, now see I now believe- that that I don't, I don't know exactly what the hell happened there because I mean I don't they, they've been they've been they've been beaten on this thing for a long long time. Yeah. And um and now for whatever reason. Uh, it, it they decided to escalate it uh, and bring it up to to mega mega war levels. This is fucking an act of war. Uh, absolutely, it's an act of war. <laughs> it's an act of war, and he didn't even go to Congress to get approval or anything. Right, right. He just fucking did it, and then he well, lies about the reason. Well, it, I mean, it's obvious they're lying. Yeah, it's yeah. It's so obvious they're lying. I mean, and now Iran's pissed. Oh, Way sure to they go, are. Trump. Way to fucking go, you cunt. But but here's the deal. Jesus. When you go to war with Iran, you don't go to war with Iran. No. You go to war with Russia. <laughs> yes, you do. That's the whole kicker right I, there. I mean... It, Russia's pissed. It, because well, it, Russia it, supplied Iran with their weaponry and well, everything. They're, 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 the ally, they're one of the top allies of, of, yeah. of Russia. And, I mean, right. it would it would be like if 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 uh, they started, you know, Russia started bombing England or or Iran started bombing England, the U.S. Yes. would the, the I mean that 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 uh, that would be the equivalent yes. of what they're trying to do to Iran. Exactly. And, and, and you know what? I am not for this. I am so pissed. I'm I, glad I, you're I not for war. <laughs> I can't even tell you how fucking pissed I am yeah. right now. I'm embarrassed to be an American uh, uh, once well, again. Yeah, see, Fuck that's <laughs> so. So this thing that looks like this sudden thing coming up, it's not. It's been going on for for you years. But no, oh, I agree with that that it's been going on leading up to this. But it was a stupid fucking thing to do. Iran's fucking pissed. 
This could be the start of a, the third, uh, the next world war. Absolutely. I mean, this is that big. Did you see any of the footage from Iran today? I did not. You didn't? No. The whole country's in the streets. I'll bet they are. I mean, that was okay. Look, uh, I am pissed. I'm pissed too. Killing that guy would be equivalent to uh, killing 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 Mike Pence. Right. The the VP. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. They no seriously, Graham. They're out. So every fucking single goddamn Iranian is out on the street. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see. uh, I'm sorry, but. For oh. all you all that think the U.S. military is the shit, compared to other militaries, they're fucking pussies. <laughs> Sorry, they're pussies. All right, all right. Because you have you ever seen any of the training videos from like Osama bin Laden or all that shit? They don't mess around in the no. fucking Middle East. Dude. No, they do Our not. Our fucking kids are pussified. Okay, okay. So well, they're sending over there. Let's let's look at this link that Kate just posted Fuck. there. Uh, Kate Kate just posted a link in the chat, and this is from the twenty seventh of December, so yes. uh, so a good week ago uh, yeah, week that ago. this happened. China, Russia, and Iran begin joint naval drills. So a four right. day four day exercise in the Indian Ocean and Gulf of Oman uh, comes at a time of heightened tensions between the U.S. and Iran. Uh, so this happened a week ago. Uh, and, and, and then this killing just happened a couple, or yesterday. Um, okay, so you guys don't realize that in Iran, when you're born as a baby in Iran, your family fucking hates America. Like, their fucking motto is and, death to America. And for good reason. Uh, right. Look at all the shit think America's about, done to them. Think about this. You're, from the time that you're a little baby, you're taught America's bad. And you can take that and back you to do nine. Whatever you gotta do to fucking kill an American, you'll fucking go to really, really fucking extreme things to do. Yeah, you could take because, that back to uh, ni- right. 1953, is is when the U.S. started really dicking with Iran. Yep. Uh, this has been going on for a long time, and now. Yeah, well before any of us were born. Really bad. Like yeah. I, I okay. am almost at a loss. Rob works is pointing out now that I feel numb. I really do. The, you guys don't know Iranian culture, like they are West. They're like the U.S. Hell yeah, they were they were a very they're, modern country. They are a modern country, just like the U.S. They're not some third world fucking bum fuck shit. No, they got their shit together. <laughs> yes, they do. They got and they got a huge military, and they got eighty two million people in their country and Iran. Is like three times bigger than Iraq. Yeah. It's huge. Okay? So don't be getting the two mixed up, Iran and Iraq. Yeah, they're right next to each other, but Iran is a huge country. They have a huge military. No, Rome, Iran is stocked to the hilt. And, 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 uh. They're, they're stocked to the goddamn hilt by the. the you know, you, the, uh, both Iran, well, I don't know about Iraq anymore because of everything that's happened there. But Iraq's but, gone. They yeah, destroyed but, the country. The but, country's but, fucked. but Iran and Iraq fought a very long war. Against each other, right? Against each other. Beca- yeah. Because of the United States. Yes. Um, and because the United, the United States was, was all that time, uh, backing. Their enemy now, the dead enemy now, Saddam Hussein. They, right. they were, they were, they were arming and funding uh, the Iraq side of that war, um, and yep. of course Russia was helping out on the other side. But yep. uh, <laughs> but they were fighting, fighting. For their, they're good at war. They know war. Oh yeah, they <laughs> fucking they're they're not dumb. They're not some <laughs> bum fuck motherfucking desert people. Yeah, they're fucking westernized. They are modernized. And to fuck with Iran was a very stupid fucking move. Yeah, Very well. stupid. Unprovoked, as far as I can tell. Oh, yeah, they come out and say this guy. You know what? When I saw the footage today from Iran, the guy they killed was well-loved. They're oh, in yeah. mourning over this person. Sure. They are the one aide or whatever that was in being next to the, standing next to the guy who was interviewed was sobbing. Okay, so don't tell me that this guy's a bad dude. 
No. Because he was very well loved by the Iranians. Yeah. And it's like you said, Grim, it's it's like the equivalent to killing the VP. Right. Yeah, these aren't no podunk fighters down in the fucking Middle East. They train them. They train them how to sh fucking chop your fucking head off, dude. <laughs> okay? They train you to sh chop somebody's fucking head off. Yeah. That's how fucking pissed they are, and they have every right to be at the U.S. Right. It makes me embarrassed to live in this country right now. Seriously. Now who's that? Uh, uh, Rose McGowan. Did you hear about Rose McGowan? Yes, I did. <laughs> I saw her tweet, what she tweeted. Yeah, she, she tweeted an apology to Iran. Yep. Um, and, and telling them uh, telling them that we're under an ISIS terrorist regime here. We are. And... and uh, and, and that that you know, fifty two percent of America is uh, apologizes to Iran for for the things that have happened over there, um, and uh, so people, all the all the neocons were up in arms. Oh, apologizing to Iran? Yeah. What's wrong with you? You know what? Good for you, Rose McGowan. Because like I said, I feel the same way. I feel the same exact way that she does. Yeah. I really do. Right. Now, this is bullshit. You don't just go fucking murder a fucking top general in some other country. Right. And it, and, and it was it was direct murder. Not only did they yeah, kill that it guy, was they, murder. they killed a bunch of other people, too, in the, in the yeah, process. Six, and then they did another one in Iraq today. Yeah, well... There's this, another one that happened. Six other people are yeah. killed or critically wounded. Right. This is ridiculous. Okay? If well, you're pro war and you're anti whatever and you're racist, get the fuck away from me. Well, seriously. Get the fuck away from me. You know, they, uh, a, a lot a lot of Americans are going to die as a result yes, of the accident. Yes, and I'm pissed. And you better you better yep. you, you better send your boys to Mexico. I, yeah, I, I was thinking, "Oh, I got to move to Canada now." No, I see, boys, but the problem the problem is Canada is part of the cabal now, so Right. Oh uh, yeah. So yeah. I got to go to I thought, okay, we'll go to Mexico and get Literally. our heads chopped off down there by a drug cartel. Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> Just wonderful. Not a good alternative, then. Well, it's... <laughs> yeah. Not a good uh, alternative. So, uh, whatever, the boys are prime age, though. There you are, they're 19. Yeah. I'll be damned if you fucking mother... I will tell them right out. The reason that they're telling you is lies. You're not going there to be a hero. You're not going there to protect freedom. You're right. going there based on an unprovoked attack, a murder, exactly. an assassination yeah. of a general, a, a top general in another country. Yep. And you're, and you know what? Too bad Baron Trump's only 13. Yeah. But he probably has bone spurs like his dad. Oh, well, let's see. Baron's, he's, he's a whole different... fucking cunt. He, he's he's a whole different deal. That Baron, he's 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 autistic supposedly. He's the he's the, he's the antichrist. I don't know. I thought Prince William was. Well, no, no. Is there more than one? Well, there could be, but I, I don't know. I I, I'm not sure how it works. But uh, I I look at Baron Trump and I see Damien. He's Damien. He's a child. <laughs> you know, you can't really gauge a child when they're out in public like you know he's the president's kid he's no, I, I, all, just, like really just, do I gotta fucking do this uh, Joel just, com just compare the, the story of the omen to, to the, the, this Trump situation and you'll okay. see you'll see Baron is, is that little Damien bastard okay well him and Prince William then <laughs> cause Prince Harry's not really Charles' son you know yeah they made it seem like he was to save face yeah. But no, he's the fucking horse trainer's son. Oh, Charles is not oh, okay. a redhead. Diana was not a redhead. Okay, okay. He was a man. <laughs> the horse trainer was a redhead. Well, you know. He had to he had to adjust her saddle. <laughs> yeah, he did. He adjusted it just right. Yeah. <laughs> And then they had to like play that Harry's his kid, Charles' son, but it's not because they, you know, oh, oh, we can't have that kid on. Yeah, they they got enough scandal 
already right. going on with and the uh, Prince Andrew thing. That's like over the top. Like they're not getting out of that one. They're they're, they're fucked up with this <laughs> Prince Andrew fucking thing. They are fucked up. Yeah, yeah. They're not fooling me yet for a second. Uh, Goober Goober says Damien would be smarter, but I don't I don't know how smart Baron Trump is. And of course, I don't uh, you know, Damien did play that deception game for a long time right. too. So, um, uh, yeah, so, you know, if uh, Barron's playing that playing that same game. We'll see, you know, coming up, well, if we live that long. Um. <laughs> I believe, I seriously feel, got a bad feeling. Like, I seriously think this is the start of a huge war. Uh, well, and, and, you know, Iran obviously has to respond. They can't, they, they can't, they, they can't. Did, they already said they're going to. Right. Well, you think, like, okay, so someone, some one of my friends on Facebook posted, no war with Iran, and put it like, you know what I mean? Right. I'm well. like, dude, don't even post that, because they already said, they're, they want revenge. They're, it, it's, it's going to happen. Yeah, that, that shot's it's been fired. You can hope for it not to, but after this, they're not going to just sit back and go, oh, well. No, right, right. they're pissed. So, well, we'll see what they're happens, you know. Pissed. Uh, it's not going to be good, but, but, uh, no, it's not. uh, and, 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 and then you got a lot of people saying, oh, look, you know, uh, Trump just did this. So the, the, uh, the impeachment went Seriously, goes... you guys, you guys need to see <laughs> this footage from the streets. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, you need to see the fucking footage from the streets of Iran today. Yeah. Everybody, every Iranian is pissed. As in, they should and be. In the street. Yeah, as, as they should be, you know. It's they a... should be. I don't blame them. I mean, they are pissed, dude. And they have every right to be. Right. And I am embarrassed to be an American once again today. And you can judge me all the fuck you want, motherfucker. But war fucking sucks. Period. Right. War is for rich fucks to get richer. And I, I, I'm pissed. I'm pissed. I just, I, I'm fucking pissed because I do have 19-year-old sons. Zach's in college for sure. Matt is going to be maybe at a tech school, but he'll be in some kind of schooling. But even I don't even feel like that's protection enough to exclude them from the draft. No, it isn't because they can just say you're anybody this age between this age and this age. We need you. You're you're in. Exactly. And they did sign up for the selective service. So yeah. So here we go again. All right. I know. No, there's people in the U.S. that are pissed. Can you imagine being an Iranian American right now? Can you imagine living in America being from Iran? I can't. Yep. I would be fucking pissed. Oh, you got that one, uh, that one congresswoman, uh, Elon Omar. Yes. She, she's Iranian. I thought she was from Somalia. Maybe she is. I don't know. I thought she was Billy, Iranian. Uh, she, she I'll sounds look it up. Omar sounds Iranian to me. <laughs> it's not. No, it sounds Somalian to me. All right. She's from Somalia. She's not from the Middle East. Oh, okay. <laughs> she sounds 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 Iranian to me. She's not. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> she is not Iranian. Uh, okay, okay. She is Somalian, I'm pretty sure. Let me look. See, Tulsi. Tulsi. She was born in Mogadishu, Somalia. Look at, look at that. Look at that automated story on there. October 4th, 1982. Okay. Automa oh, no. Automated story there. Tulsi Gabbard tweets, we need to get out of Iraq and Syria now. <laughs> okay, well, that's a good start. Yeah. Tulsi. I mean... <laughs> so at least, at least, at least Tulsi pretends to be anti-war. Whether she actually is or not, I don't know. Uh, but, you know, uh, they had to keep this hatred between the U.S. and the Middle East going. That's why they did what they did in '53. Let's let's see what else. With the regime change, like Rums pointed out, and so this hatred 
or the supposed hatred that we're supposed to have for another human being in another country. I don't buy into that. I'm sorry, I don't. Okay, here's, here's I'm a the... huge history buff, and I know so much about the Vietnam War, yeah, and World War II, and the Civil War, that you can't tell me shit. War is fucking war, and it's evil. Okay. And it's coming to us. They're coming for us, people. They said they are. They're they're not going to sit. Back. Iran has a huge military. They are not going to sit back here. Oh hell no, hell no. We're here, in for a hurt, yeah. dude. We're here, in for a whole lot of hurt right now. Uh, here's here's the rest of Tulsi's tweet. We need okay. to get out of Iraq and Syria now. That is the only way we're going to prevent ourselves from being dragged into this quagmire deeper and deeper into a war with Iran, a war with Iran, World War Three. Yes, too late for that. We've been, this quagmire has been going on for what, 30 years, 40, since, oh, 53. It's been going on since 1953, so, yeah, people. Since, yeah, since before any of us were born, so. Right. Um. I, I, I can't even, this is just beyond, beyond like, I feel numb. And Ron Paul posted up a video today. After Trump's attack, Iraq finally united. Against us. <laughs> yeah, of course they fucking did. I mean... Oh, man. I, 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 I tried not to think about it all day. But then, like, I click on Bing, the Bing homepage or whatever, and they got stories about this guy. And they got... It's just... It's... It's it's wrong the way they ha they went about this and yeah. he uh, actually committed um, uh, he he broke the law Trump broke the law by doing this. Well, you would he, is a, he is a criminal. Uh, yeah, you just you just don't go around bombing civilian you airports. You can't just decide to assassinate somebody a, a general in another country you, and not have repercussions. You can't bomb a civilian airport. No, you can't. I mean, what the fuck? You, you you can't do it. It, it, it. It's not supposed to go down like that. Right. Here's this one. This is a different. This is the other one that I was talking about, Graham. So the guy, the the general, got murdered two days ago. Yeah. This happened because I don't know the time. There's a time difference, right? They're way ahead of us. Right. Right. So today. Another drone attack killed uh, a, a new U.S. air raid targeting the commander of Iraq's Hashd al Shabi paramilitary forces has instead kicked, killed at least six people early on Saturday, according to news reports, a day after a drone attack by the United States killed Iranian General Qassem Soleimani. Yeah. So this is in Iraq now. Right. So they're fucking stirring the shit, dude. Yeah. Drone strikes are illegal? What are you talking about? They should be illegal. Oh my god, man. I can't <laughs> look at the chat and fucking that fuck. I can't fucking. Well, dr fucking drone strikes should be illegal. Shouldn't, shouldn't drone strikes be illegal? Well, what he did was illegal, period. Yeah. You can't just decide you're going to murder a general, a top general in a different country. I mean, what would have happened if that was the U.S.? Who's the top general in the U.S. right now? Who knows? I don't even know. I mean, but let's say Mike Pence was assassinated by a drone strike. What do you think would happen? Right. Jesus Christ, people. Yeah. Lady. Put yourself in someone else's fucking shoes for a minute. I dare you. Seriously. I agree. I agree. Fucking, fucking get off your shit. You ain't <laughs> special because you're an American. Uh, American exceptionalism, baby. Yeah, fuck <laughs> that. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's play some music here. Okay, here, um, here's this. But there's a couple of videos on this link. All right. But there, you got to see... I'll look for the link of the, the the protesting in the streets. And and I must say, what a wonderful way to start 2020. That's 
what I said. I'm like, this is fucked up. This is a fucked up way to start a goddamn year and a new decade, bitch. Right. What yeah. the fuck are you doing? I know. You I know. Orange fuck. <laughs> Go away. You orange fuck. Go away. <laughs> Fucking ass. Uh, Government, go yeah, fucking away. Yeah. You fucking pieces of shit. Yes. Fuck you. Fuck you. Yep. All right. Well, here we go. Little bit of thing to make everybody feel a little bit better. This is a young lady by the name of uh, Samantha Fish. <laughs> that there, that there is the George Baker selection. Uh, you, you may remember that song from the movie Reservoir Dogs. Um, <laughs> great band. Uh, the song's a little green bag. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a cool tune, man. Cool tune, cool band. Uh, before that, the rock, uh, amazing uh, blues rock guitarist there, Philip Sace, doing Out of My Mind. Uh, back in May of uh, 2019 at the Dallas International Guitar Festival. And we kicked it off with Samantha Fish. Somebody's always trying over there in Homer, New York, on uh, in March 23rd of uh, 2019. Yeah, Samantha, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, I love her. <laughs> but, yeah, Hansel, that's a George Baker selection uh, for your future reference. Uh, should you decide to want to look them up, uh, I don't. I don't really know how many other songs they had that were uh, anything, but uh, that, that that's definitely their 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 biggest hit. Uh, maybe they were a one hit wonder, um, but uh, yeah. Reservoir Dogs uh, was that uh, somebody's grooving sounds of the seventies uh, on the radio, playing on the radio. <laughs> yeah, my voice is on, man. How, how the hell you all doing? Hey, baby. I, I don't know where, where, where Moose Girl go. Moose Girl, you there? All right, I don't know where she is. She'll probably unmute in a moment once she gets done chatting with the chatters, as she does do. <laughs> Miss Moose? Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Moose. Hello. There you are. Hello, I'm here now. Okay, good. Now, okay. um, before we get back into anything, I, I just want to bring up something. I brought it up at the beginning of the show, but I don't think you had tuned in yet. All right. All right. Um, I'm considering and mm -hmm. uh, putting up for your consideration okay. a, a possible time change to the to the program. The Freakers Ball? Yeah, yeah, Freakers Ball. Now, I know okay. we, we've been doing it from... Uh, from uh, 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. Eastern uh, for yes. many years now. Um, but I, I was thinking maybe a time change would be good. Um, and and I have a, f a few options or a couple options. One, leave it as it is. Don't change nothing. Okay. Another one, uh, make it a two-hour show where we would only go to 1 p.m. East, uh, 1 a.m. Eastern. Or third option, uh, bring it back an hour. Uh, so start start at 10 p.m. Eastern, and and then run to 1 1 a.m. Eastern. So those are just some ideas, some concepts, some some thoughts I had about it. Okay. Um, and uh, so I, I let you let you mull it over and Don't see. Don't speak for me. I'm not not speaking for you. I'm I I, 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 I just I want I wanted to. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to bring those. Don't fucking speak for me. I'm sitting right here. I, I I'm to, busy doing the Freakers Ball. Yeah, I'm busy doing my show right now. I want I want to bring those ideas up uh, in your head and, and uh, just so uh, consider those um, and uh, and uh, think what 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 if we do want to change what we might like to change to um, and how it will work out for you. Uh, I, I've also considered going to two times a week. Two times a week? I mean, not two times a week, two times a month. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. Okay. I mean, if you if you just want to do two times a month, that's fine. Okay. But, but I'm still going to do every every Some week. Some form of, okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm still going to do every week. Um, that's fine. I No, I mean, I guess the way that we have it right now is fine because... You're all cool with if something comes up and I have to not do the show and you're fine with it and you do balls to the wall. Right, yeah. Yeah, whatever works, so, you know. 
Yeah, I mean. Um, that, the only thing. The only thing is. <laughs> maybe I hate maybe. I, I don't like maybe at all. I know. <laughs> I don't know if I can do the nine o'clock. That's too early for me. Nine the nine o'clock start. Oh, oh, okay. All right, so we could just leave it as it. Because I'm on Central Time. I'm not on Eastern Time. Well, I don't I know. like the, you know, I don't refer to Eastern Time at all. Like, I'm in Central Time. Like, I know that Eastern Time is an hour ahead of me. Right. You know, but I mean, nine o'clock. I could. Uh, I'll, I might be late more often than not. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we we could just leave it as it is. I I just. You know, there's some, some thoughts I had about it, so... Well, maybe see if other people... I mean, I just think everyone's so interested, or, I mean, in tune to the fact that we're on this, this time on Friday, every every time. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I th why do you want to change the time? Well, it's just a thought. You know, a lot of the East Eastern time people kind of fade off towards the last hour, so... True, but so. then there you got Rob in Texas, and he fades off. And he, he's in Arkansas. After the first hour. He's in Arkansas. Oh, now he's in Arkansas, but still, he's not on the East Coast. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I just think, and I think a lot of people, if they miss it, they do listen to the podcast. Okay. If they really want to, they will. All right. Well, you know, I, I don't know how many people listen to our podcast. Uh, but it's just a just a thought, you know. I just uh, because uh, you know. Um, Right. Whatever. Doesn't matter. I mean, I will be here when I can. But, like, I was trying or talking last night, like, this is a volunteer gig for me. Like, I do not get paid to sit here for three hours every Friday to do this show. I mean, it's right. volunteer. And if people get all butthurt or something because I don't make it one week, that's on you guys. That's not on me. <laughs> that's on you guys. <laughs> because, you know what? I, this is a volunteer gig, and of three hours of time is valuable. Sure. You know, I mean, and I only get two days off a week, and and if I want to, I can go out, and I have something going on on Friday and on Saturday. The Freakers Ball isn't my top priority. This is not CNN, you guys. This is not a mainstream media network. This does not... You guys are so, we're all so brainwashed into this TV shit because we grew up on it. Most yeah. of us here, especially if you're in your over 50, you remember black and white television, okay? You remember having a black and white TV in your home. Right. This is right. not This is not CNN. We don't lie. It's not. We are, I am not getting paid for this gig. We, we don't lie. want me to be. I have to be here every single Friday like it's a, a job. Then you guys can send me my check. I'll give you. I'll, I'll put my address out, and I'll let you guys can send me my pay. You know, because this is a paid, not a paid gig, dude. This is volunteer. Yes. And I have a life. Yes. And we've been doing this for goddamn almost thirteen goddamn years now. So. You know, I'm sorry, but the Freakers Ball, I love the Freakers Ball. I really do. It's an outlet for me. Like, tonight, with this whole Iran thing, I'm like, oh, my God, I got to do a show tonight because I just I have to talk about this. <laughs> because I, I can't talk with most people about this stuff. Right. You know, I just can't because they don't get it. They don't because get it. Because they're whatever they are. And it's like, you know, I need an outlet. And for me, this is this is one of the reason, main reason I, for me, that we started this show. Because we're just exactly. sitting around in front. I was raising kids. I mean, we were going on the 13th year. That means my kids were fucking, what, when we started, seven or something? I don't know when we started. You know, I was raising kids. I was, I didn't get to go out all the time. I was raising kids. I knew when I had them kids that was an 18-year hands-on deal, dude. Sure. And I'm still paying for Zach's car insurance. He's using my other car. I mean, it's not like you, you, you stop supporting them once they turn 18, you know? Yeah. But what my point is, is I was just sitting home a lot of Friday nights. And it's like, well, if I'm going to be home Friday night, I might as well do a, a broadcast. Sure. Because, like when I said, when my kids, when we first started, my kids were seven. 
so they'd go to bed early. By 10 o'clock, they were in bed. You know, and I'm sitting here by myself, can't go out, don't have money, don't have a babysitter. You know, might as well freaking do a broadcast. I you know? agree. <laughs> and, re try, you know, try to vent a little bit and say, oh, we made it through another week, which is a good deal for all of us, you know. Sure, sure, sure. All right. Anyway, enough of that. So okay. um, we're right. good to go. Um, okay. Yep. Here, here's a story that I want to share. All right. Because it's one of my favorite topics to talk about. Okay. Ba baking soda. Baking soda. Oh, yes. You <laughs> love baking soda. All right. This is posted up on beforeitsnews.com on okay. December 25th, 2019. All right. This doctor shocked the world. And he says, cancer is a fungus that can be treated with baking soda. <laughs> That's right. Which I've told you people many, many times. A global cancer report, yes. uh, a global cancer report by a leading U.S. health organization estimates that cancer will kill 7.6 million people worldwide this year. About 20,000 cancer deaths a day. And more than 12 million people will find out they have the disease. Cancer is one of the deadliest diseases known to mankind. However, according to Italian doctor Tullio Simonucci, Simonuccini, however you say it, ca <laughs> cancer is nothing but a fungus that can be eliminated with baking soda. Dr. Simonuccini uh, used this method to cure thousands of patients suffering from different types of cancer and claims that it is 100% effective. The therapy isn't harmful at all, and let's face it, you got nothing to lose. Uh, the painful reality of more and more cancer cases is somehow connected to the failures of oncology. We have to prove that modern oncology is unable to answer all the questions cancer patients have. It's our moral and ethical co commitment to find the real cure for the hardest and deadliest diseases of our time. So um, there you have it. You know, uh, there, there's more to the article, but uh, that's that's the basis of it right there. Uh, and as I've said many, many times, cancer cannot live in an environment that is pH balanced, right. which is exactly, which is exactly yeah. what, what baking soda does for you. It, it balances your pH system. Yeah, and, and and let me just tell you, all you need to do, take a teaspoon of baking soda. Put it in a thing of water, a glass of water, every each morning. Stir it up till it's all dissolved, which takes a second or thirty seconds, maybe. Guzzle it down. You're good to go. Your body will stay pH balanced. And, yep. And it costs basically nothing. It, it's almost free. So, um, well, you know, not not free, but you know, it's like a dollar for a big old box. Yeah, it's cheap. <laughs> it's cheap. It's the cheapest stuff you can get. It's very and, and 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 it's just amazing. Um, so baking soda. I, it says here the, yeah. the, the usual antifungal drugs are ineffective against cancer, as they only attack the surface of the cells. The main infection is more powerful than the single bacterium, which is why fungal infections last for so long. This guy has identified the things that can attack these colonies of fungi for cancer. It's baking soda. And an iodine tincture is the best for substance for the skin cancer. So if you have it, you know, the whatever you call that, melanomas, uh, uh, use an iodine tincture on those. Yeah. Um, so uh, mm -hmm. the, the doctor claims many studies have confirmed baking soda's intracellular action against cancer. So there. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Actually, put it right. in your Actually, put it in your water and drink it, but. <laughs> so. Right. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, it's, you know, it's something. Uh, um. Hang on a second. Oh, shit, they are showing it. What? I can't find the link. I can't find the link to the the protesting that went on today. Oh, okay, okay. 
I mean, seriously, you gotta see it. It's it's intense. It really, I mean, I just, I'm dumbfounded. Like, I'm really pissed. I just don't even really know how to feel right now. Well, you know. I have all these kinds of emotions because it's like I have kids. I know my history of war, certain wars in this country and world wars. And it's just like, this This is ridiculous. The, this isn't the way to solve problems. I mean, this is one of the reasons I love Ron Paul. He was all about truly being diplomatic, you know, like talking things out instead of just attacking, you know. I mean, the U.S. has a horrible fucking track record when it comes to this. The U.S. is not diplomatic. The the military branch of the the city-state, that's why the U.S. is so hardcore military. They're the city-state. The the U.S. is the military branch of the city-state. Right. And so that's why the U.S. tries to be such a badass militarily. Because they are supposed to control the world. Because they're the third they're, they're the third city state. You know what I mean? Right. Most people don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about right now. Well, what do you mean the third city state? There's three. Okay? There's three city states. Look it up if you don't know what I'm talking about. The the one, the main one's London. The second one's the Vatican. The third one's the U.S. Right. Washington. Right. And if you guys don't know about that history, you need to go down that rabbit hole, or you should, so you can learn and you'll see it's all interconnected and it's all been going on since the dawn of fucking time, basically, in this country. I mean... The Wounded Knee Massacre, what happened at Wounded Knee in the 1800s, is not pretty. It's fucking ugly. Yeah. And they just glossed it over, all right? The Trail of Tears, the Cherokee Indians, they just glossed that shit over, dude. Yeah. They don't want you to know about that. That's the ugly history of the U.S., right? Oh, absolutely. They want you to think we're the fucking greatest country in the world! (laughs) Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. oh yeah. 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 We're the greatest motherfucking country in the fucking world! (laughs) Really? Based on what? Based on what? Healthcare? No, we're not the number one there. Based on what? Economy? No, we're not the number one. There. Based Kelly, on what? The, the, the Education? Number, the, the number no, one. No, we're not the number one there either. <laughs> the, the, the number one killers in the, the world. The list goes on and on, people. The, the number one what? killer killers in the world. Yes. Okay. The U.S. is a murdering country. A and warring country. The greatest death we're force in the world. Yes, peace. Peace. Cir- circle gets it. Cir- cir- circle gets this it. This is not a country of fucking peace. The greatest death force in the oh. world and the most violent culture. Yep. yep. And, you know, um, um, people would say that, some people would say, oh, no, well, the Middle East, oh, they out. They'll chop your hands off for stealing something. You know what? That sounds harsh. But you know what? What better way to stop people from stealing? <laughs> Do you want your fucking hand chopped off because you stole something? Yeah. I don't. The, great, the greatest prison you know, system, that's for sure. You, you want to talk about harsh? Let's for, talk about fucking the, harsh. The greatest for-profit prison system. Yeah, no yeah. shit. Vinny is out of radio for a while. All right. Okay. All right, that's fine. Sorry that's to fine. hear that, Vinny. All right, well, you know what the, 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 the new Sorry. you know Sorry, what the, the new big global killer is? And, and, and I saw an advertisement on, on the television the other day about Vaccines. this. Vaccines. No, no, no. Well, that's that's Vaccine. another that's another one. But I, I saw another. I, I saw I saw a commercial on the TV the other day about this. T-Mobile is the only nation to currently have five. You're in and out, Graham. I don't know what's going on. I am. You're like you're you're you're, 
Yeah, you're you're kind of like. I'm, I'm looking at my my levels your here. Phone, it's like. I'm looking at my levels here. Everything looks good, so. You're kind of like I don't know if they can hear it there, but I can hear it in my headphones. I don't know. All right, I, I don't know. I Every, everything it. looks good on my end. Okay, just let me know. Here, All right. go ahead. Anyway, so uh, uh, T-Mobile is the only company presently that has a 5G nationwide network. <laughs> and so from that, I Yay! thought, yeah. Fuck that. Fuck the 5G so, shit. So that means it's out there. So I thought I would bring this up because of that. It's on Wall Street Journal or WSJ.com. Um, and, and I only get a little bit of it because they have a paywall and you can only read a little bit of the article. Uh, uh, but here it says, the FCC says, and you can trust them, right? The FCC says 5G does not pose new cell phone radiation threats. Bullshit! The agency maintains existing limits on radiation exposure from cell phone network equipment. Um <laughs> so the, the FCC has decided to allow the rollout of new 5G wireless networks without making any changes to federal safety limits for cell phone radiation exposure. The telecommunications regulator voted unanimously this week to keep in place standards for how much exposure to the radio frequency energy cell phones and antennas emit is safe. It's safe. The FCC said so. You can trust the FCC. They told you so. Well, thanks there, um, uh, all y'all, for giving the sound checks there. I don't, I don't know what's going on with your uh, headset over there, Moose, but um, it's something on your My own. headset? Apparently, every, everybody says it's, everybody said I'm fine. No, it must be. I don't know. That's Doesn't right. Matter. I can still hear you. It's, it's fine. Okay, okay. All right, so um, that's that on that. Yeah, I mean, you just want to talk about killers, hidden, invisible killers that they're pushing out at breakneck pace. 5G is a huge one. On top of the the vaccines and the GMOs and the glyphosates and the... <laughs> Glyphosate, chemtrails, fluoride. Yeah, uh, on top of all those other things. Blah, blah, blah. That, now they got this. And, 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 all that shit will kill you. And now, and now, and now with uh, World War Three heading our direction. Yeah, oh, I feel boy. Like, guys, you guys, I'm not fucking around, dude. I'm seriously not a happy camper right now. I, I, I know you're war. not. I hate war. This is bullshit what happened. This was murder. You know, un, unprovoked. And, yeah, they were having fights back and forth on Twitter. I'm sorry, grow the fuck up. You don't get to go just say we're going to kill the top general of another country. It's just not a good idea. What happened, it puts us all in peril. Like, right. my children are in peril right now. I feel this. I'm not fucking around, like, when I say that. I feel like I am in peril. I really do. Yeah. And it's not a good feeling. I hate this feeling. I don't, you shouldn't have to feel like this. Anybody, nobody should have to feel like this. And I know that I, my, I, you know, I've been like a what? Yeah. Hat, or, a, uh, what do you call it? What's that when you get something handed to you all the time? Like, I don't know. I, I never had that uh, happen. Like when you, you're like, <laughs> you don't have to do anything. Everything just gets handed to you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Spoiled. Uh, spoiled. Yeah. I'm not spoiled. I'm not fucking rich. I've never, I didn't grow up rich, like yachts and shit like that. That world's foreign to me. Yeah. And that's a small percentage of the population, those people. Yet they are the ones doing this shit. Yeah. And putting our kids in peril. Right. And putting our people in peril. Because they don't give a fuck about us. Yeah. We are nothing to them. We are just fodder. We're bodies to send over there. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean... I had boys, and I'm like, that fucking means when they turn 18, they got to do the selective service. And they had to, otherwise they would be illegal. They would be 
um, breaking the law. And I didn't, what do I want, the cops knocking on my door because I didn't sign up for psychological service? You know, and they even want the girls to do it now, too. Okay. They want the girls to sign up for selective service. Sure. It's like, I'm sorry, that's my child. Hey, don't, don't. You don't, don't get don't. to just fucking say, oh, you're going to go be, you're going to be drafted, and you're going to be sent over here to do our dirty work for us. Yeah, you know, d- double your pool of, of bodies in one shot, yeah. so. You don't get that. You, you, you don't, what? That's my child, dude. That's my child. Right, right. You know, I mean, who the fuck are you? And you lie to these guys to get them to join up, you know. Yeah. All your college will be paid for. Yeah, if you make it out alive. See, they don't <laughs> they, they don't tell you the whole story. Yeah, well. You make it out alive and not fucked up in the head. As Jim Morrison said, no one here gets out alive. You don't, but why push the envelope? And why, you know, they, these recruiters, they get these guys to sign up for the military voluntarily when they, based on lies. Yeah, oh yeah. Yes, it's illegal to not sign up for selective service, Goob. Like, if they had not, if they had just said, fuck it, we're not signing up, I would have had the cops, maybe we would have gotten letters and shit. Then we would have gotten phone calls. Then we would have got a visit in person from a policeman. Oh, yeah. Saying, you didn't sign up for selective service. Yeah. Dude, you don't know that? They own you. They want the girls to do it, too, now. They try to get that. I don't know if that even, was it, did that become into effect? I have, I have no, I have no idea. I don't know. I don't think it did yet. Yeah. But... You know what? Well, hold, wait, 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 wait. I, I, saw, I saw a meme today, how to protect your kids. Yep. Apparently, and I, and I don't know if this is true or not, but apparently, trans folks can cannot be drafted. So just what? Oh, uh, uh, what? So so just turn your boys trans. Okay, I'll just do their trans. Yeah, just just give them you know buy them. That's not true. Buy them some buy them some dresses and <laughs> wigs. But, oh, they would not go. They but, would not do well, that. Buy, buy them some oh, dre- dresses no, and they wigs. They would not. No, 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 no. That would not work for my kids. No, no. It's, it's better. It's better than uh, better than going to be uh, getting your ass blown up in a, some foreign country for some right. rich, for, a, for a rich banker. Oh, Make him watch fucking Full Metal Jacket or something. Yeah. And say now. Do you really want to go over? Do you really want to <laughs> sign up? I mean, there you, go. you might yeah. have to wear a dress, but it would be better than that, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Instead of Zach and Matt, you're you're now Zelda and Matilda. <laughs> <laughs> Make him watch Hamburger Hill and Full Metal Jacket back to back, and then we'll see. And a yeah. platoon, three movies. Watch those three movies right in a row. Clinger, yeah, they could all be Clinger. You won't want to sign up for fucking <laughs> military, dude. If you watch it, and the Deer Hunter. Let's oh, throw shit. that in too. The Deer Hunter. Yeah. Watch those four movies and get back to me about how the Vietnam War went down. Hey, I'm just glad I'm old. I, they can't draft my ass. I'm too old. They can't draft my ass either, but I got 19-year-old boys. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Moose, we're going to play some music. And and, and this set... Hairy it, legs are softer than shaved legs. Just saying. And, and this set is just for you. In case you didn't know. This set is... Stubble is... Stubble is what causes the fucking uh, rubbing, oh, yeah. whatever you call it. Yeah, well. But when they're hairier, they're softer. Just saying. Yeah. All right. In this, case you didn't know. Or say, uh, this, this set is just for you. Okay. Well, society says women are supposed to have non-hairy legs. I don't buy into that. Okay. okay. Thank you, Grim. All right. Horseshoes and hand grenades. All right, very nice, very nice there. That was the Dead South doing their track, uh, Boots. It's a good, it's a good, it's a great song. I like that video too. It tells a good story. Well, not a good story, but it tells a story, an interesting story. The Dead South. Before that, Billy Strings doing Train Train out there in Las Vegas. 
Yeah, man, Billy Strings. Uh, Billy, motherfucking strings, I, I guess I should say. And uh, horseshoes and hand grenades doing whiskey. Uh, yeah, all, all good all good tracks there. All Moose Girl requests. Yes, a, a doll, a doll, D good, D good, sorry. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you back yes, with Yes, thank yeah. you. I mean, I got Billy Fever. I'm not. I'm not afraid to admit it. Right? I know. We, we all... We I all... was telling my Lyft drivers all about Billy Strings. I know. I bet you were. <laughs> I was. I was like, okay, this is what I do. This is what you do when you're a Billy Strings fan. You tell everybody you come into contact with about Billy motherfucking Strings. You do. <laughs> it's just what we do. We're goats. We do that. That's We're goats. Goats. You know, goats do that. Goats. That's what we call our, the fans of Billy are goats. Why? Why? Billy you... goat. Billy goat. Oh, okay. Goat, Billy goat. Billy. Oh, Billy goat. Okay. Okay. You know, or um, there's a there's a the um, you know, G O A T. Yeah. Let me just look that up. G O A T. <laughs> yeah, I know how to spell goat. <laughs> Not goat. No, it's capital G, capital O. Goat. Goat. What does that mean? Goat? It's an animal. Slain. I know what the fuck I know what a goat is. <laughs> I'm not sure what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, goat meeting. What? It's a goat. Greatest mother of all time. It's GM What the <laughs> Now now how would how would you pronounce Greatest of all time. Greatest of all time. Oh, okay. okay. Go. Greatest of all time. All right, all right. Now how now how oh. how, how would you how would you pronounce G H O T I? G H O T I Goaty. Fish. <laughs> 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 it's pronounced fish. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. Yeah. I can't comprehend that. Okay, well, G, <laughs> G-H, okay, G-H like in the word laugh? Yes. Okay, that's a P. Or an, right. F, oh. an, an F, an F right. sound. Oh, okay. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, the I, or uh, the O is, uh, how, how does that work? I forget, the O sounds like an I for some reason. And, okay. And T-I like in fiction. Oh, okay. Yeah, so G-H-O-T-I is fish. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, wow. A long time, a long time ago, over on another IRC network, I, there was this guy that uh, well, it was like probably uh, EF network. Uh, anyway, and and he he that's I always thought it was goatee, but apparently it was fish. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I, I forgot why the O sounds like an I, but it, it, you have to pick some word. Where the O sounds like an I. I, I don't, I don't know. Anyway. What accent? I know I got an accent. I got like the Fargo accent. That's what they always tell me. Like, yeah, I should be in the movie Fargo. Like you were in the movie Fargo. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I can really do it strong if There's I the want fish. to. I Call for the, the fish, and there he is. Same time, dude. <laughs> I can be like, oh yeah, man. No, that's from kind of Jamaican. Uh, <laughs> I can do the Fargo like worse than I sound normally. Yeah, like, I can really do it good. Yeah, like Charlie Barron, the, the comedian friend of mine. <laughs> He's not really a friend of mine yet, but he will be. I will meet him in person. Yeah, he's a fucking hilarious dude. But anyway, uh, he can put the Midwest accent on thick. Like you can really do it if you really want to. Like, I went to broadcasting school, so I had to learn how to speak properly and yeah. not have the accent. Beer. 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 <laughs> Beer. I can do it. I can do it. Beer. <laughs> <laughs> it still sounds like Fargo, right? Yeah. I try not to have it sound like Fargo, but I that word, no, there's no hope for me on that one. 
beer. <laughs> beer sounds like beer. I don't know. Beer. I, I say it like everybody else does. Okay. Okay. I don't have an accent when I say beer. Okay. I don't. I say it just like everybody else. All right. right? I have an now argument. I want to say brewski. Now that like that's slang for beer. Uh -huh. So then I really sound Fargo-ish. Brewski. See? Okay. I sound way, far, way, way more Fargo-ish than when I say beer. Or, or you, you sound like a up -er. Yeah, Brewski. A up -er. You sound like a up -er. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I do. All right. <laughs> now, this is a good article for everybody to consider. I say. Yes. Science shows what happens to your brain... When you complain too much, this is posted up today. Okay. This is posted up today on naturalblaze.com. dot com. I actually know what happens, but go ahead. Do you? Do you? I do. I know. I, I yeah. I I know some of what happens. Like okay, you become a very negative person. You become like so bitter and like insecure and all that shit. It's not good for you. Okay. Well, here's the, the first couple bullet points here. The facts. The more we complain, the more we wire our brain to focus on the negative aspects of our yes, lives. correct. Luckily, this is a two-way street, and we can undo the damage and begin to step into a more positive mindset and outlook. Reflect this is on, true. Re Reflect on how much do you complain. The first step towards fixing this issue, issue is by becoming aware of it. Be honest with yourself, that's a very difficult thing to do, and take note of your thoughts and what you are choosing to talk about. Because we all, we all know these. Yes, it's true, it's very true, it well, is very true. We all know these types of people who always yes, find, do. find something to complain about. Uh, negative, it's negativity. Maybe we aren't <laughs> even one of them. We could be in yeah. certain ways. Some How? of us, like, we, like, I bitch about shitty drivers all the fucking time. Like, I'm like, you dumbass. Like, when I'm driving, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Right. But, but that's just, like, in the moment. That's, like, I'm not focusing on it. It's not my fault they're dumbass drivers. Dumbass drivers. I, you know what I mean? It's like, but I'm not really complaining. I'm just bitching. Yeah. <laughs> it's just kind of the same thing. Anyway, it says how much of an effect does how much of an effect does complaining actually have on the brain, and what can we do about it? New, right. new research shows exactly how complaining every day might be affecting our brain, and because the brain is an amazing and resilient organ, we can even reverse these effects. The first step is to become aware of the issue. What's your first thought when you wake up in the morning? Oh shit, I'm still here. Um, <laughs> my first thought damn it <laughs> anyway <laughs> are you already dreading the day ahead is it cloudy and thus right out of bed you find yourself in a grumpy mood uh, well if this is you uh, know that it is not too late to make a change complaining you can you like my son Matt I do yeah you guys are doom and gloomers like Matt <laughs> Seriously, does not want to be here. It's like I'm like, how what you know, how what how's it going? I woke up today. There you go. I'm like, really, dude? <laughs> this is doom and gloom. This is not healthy. This is well, not healthy. Well, for a, for a 19 year old, uh, that's um... right. <laughs> yeah, I agree, Circle. That sucks. Well, like, it, it's for true. Me, though. It's exact opposite. I'm like. Yes, I woke up again. Like I'm still here, right. you know. But these guys all are right. like, "Damn it!" All right, all right. I'm well, well, I won't. I, I won't go. How, I, the fuck, don't be sarcastic, uh, Slash. I almost called you cunt. Don't be sarcastic. All right, I won't. I won't go on with the article. But here's the link. Here's you know the that's not true. Why would you say a thing that's not true? For anybody that that wants to maybe read through it and and figure out ways that you don't have to be such a negative asshole, there you go. Yes, I wake up feeling glad that I'm awake again. But I like, I do complain. See, you're wrong. Then, if you're not being sarcastic, then you're incorrect because I complain about shit all the time. Uh huh. So no, okay, not all the time, but. <laughs> I complain. I bitch about shit that pisses me off. 
like, this is why I'm doing this show, because, like, the Iran thing. I'm pissed off about that right now. Like, I'm trying to, like, be as positive as I can uh-huh. about it and not trying to let it affect me, but it really bothers me. It really fucking does. You know, I'm not happy with this outcome. I'm not happy with this action. I'm not happy with what's going on. And I have to, the, the thing with me is I pay attention to this kind of shit. Because I fucking care. Because I have a fucking heart. You know? And I put on a good front, like I'm a badass. <laughs> you know? But no. I'm not. I'm a fucking softy. I have this huge fucking heart. And I've, through my upbringing in this country, I have had to put armor around my heart because you can't, you're not supposed to have a heart. You're not supposed to feel anything. You're just supposed to be a fucking robot. Okay. Or whatever, you know, you're not supposed to feel, you're not supposed to be individual. So you have to put, and then you have to be careful about when you take the armor off your heart. Around certain people, I can do that. Yeah. But around other people, I don't do that. I don't take the armor off at all. Right. Because you know that they're fucked up and they want to hurt you. You know? Sure. And you learn, you learn how to do it, and that's the problem with is with this country. One of them, there's many, but you know we're fucked up, dude. We're, we're fucked up. Yeah, because we are the military branch of the three city states, so it's not a surprise that the military is honored here as much as it is, and they br- keep up bringing this past World War Two shit. How long ago was World War II, Graham? Uh, a couple of years. 76 years ago? <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on, people. It was 76 years ago. This isn't cool anymore. It's not cool. The wars nowadays are based on lies. Vietnam was based on a goddamn lie. Yeah, they were always based on lies. Yeah, but still. Come on. This is not cool. I am not happy. I am not a happy camper. I'm embarrassed to See, be. Maybe you need to read here, that. Let me, you, I mean, you need to. You I'm need, embarrassed that I'm an American. You need. You need. To, you need to read that article about complaining. I'm not complaining right now, am I? Well, I don't know. Are you? No, I'm okay. voicing my opinion. <laughs> All right. It's different than complaining. Complaining people are like, oh. Fuck, you know, I have to stand in line behind two people to <laughs> check out my groceries. God damn it. Why do I gotta fucking always end up behind a slow, in a slow line? Oh, God. Or if you're always like that, always negative, always... Fu- no, I'm not. Well, if you... you see, it's, it's hard because it's, it's, it's speech. And you can't really, like... Like, how someone perceives what I say, I can't control that. Uh huh. I know what I mean when I'm talking, but another person might take it the wrong way or perceive it differently than what I'm meaning. I, you know, you that's that's the problem with chat rooms too is you can't hear someone's tone of voice. You can't. You're not looking them in the eye. You're not right there in physical contact with them. You know, there's a big there's a difference between talking to somebody in person, face to face, and talking to somebody in a chat room. There's a, that's a huge line right there. Yeah. Huge spectrum. Face to face is the best way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Chat room is not the best way. Chat room is like on the end, of the lower end of communication spectrum, I would say, because you can't. It's so easy to misconstrue what someone types, you know, and it's so you can't tell really if someone's being sarcastic unless they sometimes they have to type. I was being sarcastic because you someone can't tell. So you know, sometimes I just fucking. You, you could use a you could use a sark tag. Yeah, you could do that. That would be a good thing, so people would know you're being. But I think some people type shit 
wanting people not to know if they're being sarcastic. They want to be the shock and awe thing. Well, I'm being sarcastic, but I'm going to type this outrageous thing, but I'm being sarcastic. I just want to see the reaction. See, that's someone that likes to play people. That's someone that likes to put something out there and see how people react. Yeah. You know, it's like the dollar bill trick. When you put a dollar bill on a fish line, a fish line, right? You can't see the fish line. People come walking along. You're sitting right there, like this is like at a festival or camping or something. You're sitting right there in a chair, and someone walks along. They see that dollar laying out there. Nine times out of ten, the person's going to pick up that goddamn dollar, right? Sure. So you're just going, but when they pick it up, you're going to fucking pull that line and fucking rip it right out of their fucking hand. Mm-hmm. That's being sarcastic. <laughs> you if you know? say so. <laughs> I don't see that as sarcasm, but all right. <laughs> like, you're looking for someone's reaction. Like, you're putting something out there sarcastically, but you're looking for the reaction that you're going to get. Like, that's what people do that dollar bill trick. They want to see the reaction. They want to laugh at the people that pick up that dollar and then, you know, that's kind of cruel in a way. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's funny, but it's cruel too. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. It's like you're playing on someone's typical emotions. You know a per- normal person's going to pick up that goddamn dollar bill. Okay. You know what I mean? Sure, sure. All right. Here, let's try this story. <laughs> Since you didn't all, you all didn't like my, my one about how, how the complainers go. So let's let's try this one. It's posted on thesun.co.uk back on uh, December 12th. Astronauti Elon Musk is sending marijuana to astronauts on the ISS and could create new mutant weed. <laughs> It's not a joke either. Uh, Elon Musk's SpaceX will be sending cannabis to the astronauts on the ISS. The space dwellers can expect their delivery to be on SpaceX Dragon Capsule, which is scheduled to make its next trip in March of 2020. Musk himself may be the man behind SpaceX, but he's not the brains behind these weed plans. It's actually agri-tech company Fort Range Biosciences. The firm announced recently announced its intentions to send plant cultures of hemp, the legal cannabis strain with low levels of THC compound, to space. Once uh, there, the cultures are intended to remain an ISS incubator for 30 days. During the 30-day period, the hemp will be monitored remotely from the University of Colorado Boulder by BioServe Space Technologies. The cannabis cultures will then be sent home to Earth. Once once home, the Front Range Biosciences will be observing what effect, if any, space radiation and microgravity has had on the gene expression of hemp. Uh, Front Range CEO Jonathan Vaught said, this is, There is science to support the theory that plants in space experience mutations. Uh, there's an opportunity to see whether those mutations hold up once brought back to Earth and if there are new commercial applications. So, uh, space weed! <laughs> Yay, space weed! Woohoo! They got a picture of, uh, here of Musk smoking a joint on, on the Joe Rogan show. <laughs> uh, weed in space! <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> I tell you. All right, let's do another one. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I'm just like numb. I don't like war. I hate it because the thought of it. I know I, I, I have, I can like see the, see what's gonna happen. Like, okay, so what's gonna happen is, Iran's gonna attack Israel or fucking Kuwait or something. You know, something's going to happen. And Russia's back in the Iranians, dude. And this could be really bad. Like, I hope that this is... I'm I'm praying. I'm going to be praying and burning sage every fucking day. 
Because I don't want a full out world war, dude. I that would be bad for everybody. It would. It would be bad, bad for every person on this planet. Okay? And this is how passionate I am about this. You know, laugh at me. I don't care. Fuck, you know, I don't, I'm anti war. I'm proud of being anti war. Good. I am too. Yep. And I believe that this is really bad. I believe this is a start. And it just, it, it, it really irks, it, it's weird because, what is it? The third of Jan, the fourth of January. Third. Okay, well, fourth now, but yeah, yes, it has years. always been here, but it's not the answer. No, it won't. I, I refuse to believe that it will always. It doesn't have to always be here. Uh-huh. I'm not going to buy into that. I'm not going to buy into that way of thinking because even though history says that, that doesn't mean the future has to be that. Right. You know. So I hate. I don't like it when people say. War will always be here. No. I didn't say you said that was an answer flash. <laughs> I'm just saying I would I would like a world where it doesn't exist. Okay? Yeah. Maybe I'm a dreamer. I'm not the only one. Like yeah. John Lennon said. Uh-huh. Right? Uh-huh. Okay. Okay, let's try this. All right. UFO scare. Across New Zealand, as huge, weird object zooms across the night sky. So, All right, it, weird. A, a weird object. Yeah, well, listen, listen. As a huge, bright shape sped, sped across the sky above New Zealand recently, as puzzled residents tried to figure out what the object might be, with speculation ranging from meteor or hypersonic guided shell to UFOs, Drawing sperm-like shapes in their wake. Why are they going to mention that? The shape of it looks like a sperm? Really? (laughs) Was that relevant? I don't know. It says a huge weird object distinctly visible in the sky on the 6th of December left New Zealanders wondering just what it was, with imaginations running wild and many speculating it could be a UFO. Um. (laughs) <laughs> As those who witnessed the fascinating sight uh, shared their impressions, Stuff website posted comments from the excited residents. And it, it does look like, you know, a huge sperm swimming across the sky. Uh, they got they got photos here. Uh, Jason Wilmhurst from Katuki in the Bay of Plenty thought it was a large meteor over Rotura. It moved across the sky from east to west, heading towards Tuapo. Tapo, I don't know. Uh, Napier resident Simone somebody said it was visible from the suburb of some place, posting a snap simply titled Something Weird in the Sky. As the debate gathered momentum, an official, official authorita announcement put a damper on the speculations, as it seems the object was less a UFO and more of an electron rocket launched by Rocket Lab. And a mission titled Running Out of Fingers, which is a weird title. Uh, anyway, the name, incidentally, is a nod to the 10th Electron flight since they began in May of 2017. With UFO speculations dying down, nevertheless, excited netizens posted dramatic snapshots and footage from different areas where the launch object was visible, eagerly sharing their impressions and speculating what the object shooting across the skies looked like. The big sperm! Sperm flying through the air! <laughs> UFO sperm! <laughs> All right, <laughs> I've got to play some more music here. <laughs> uh, while you all speculate on the sperm. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> All right. Kicking it off with a cowboy tech request here. This is Pink Floyd. Oh, uh, yeah, is your face melted yet? <laughs> That's Eric Gales and his band there uh, doing a little Bedley uh, Voodoo Child Cashmere back in black and just some other stuff he was just coming up with on the spot. 
And it's funny watching this band try, trying to keep up with him because they have no idea where he's going. He just makes stuff up as he goes along, and it's great stuff. Eric Gales, yeah, check him out, man. Uh, before that, Led Zeppelin and Musco requests going to California, and we kicked it off with a Cowboy Tech request there. Pink Floyd doing money. Yeah, yeah baby. Rock, rock, and freaking roll. Big money. <laughs> yeah, no, Eric Gales is really good, Mike. Uh, look him up on YouTube or whatever. I mean, seriously, he's amazing. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. He's oh, awesome. Yeah. Like, he, he can recreate Led Zepp. That means you're amazing. Oh, like, he, he, re- he, yeah, like, he know, can do all the, all the Jimmy stuff. and. Uh, if you can uh, do all that, then you're fucking, yeah, you're good. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. All right, we we only got a few minutes, but uh, yeah, we do. Okay. But uh, that's all right. That's all right. If you got you got that's a story, okay. you got a story, a quick story. No, then? I don't. I do not. No. Oh, okay. okay. I I'm not. I was gonna look one up, but since we're out of time, like I see the time, so it's like. All right. Well, let me hit this one real quick because. All right. Oh, I know it'll just please everybody so much. Oh yeah, well, I can't well, tell it, it'll 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 please uh, <laughs> it'll please those of you that use pharmaceutical drugs. I don't uh, use any. Yeah, I, I don't either. I don't but, uh, uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> I know. All right, this uh, posted uh, yesterday on ArsTechnica.com. Big Pharma celebrates the new year. By raising drug prices on over 250 drugs. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Leading drug makers rang in the new year by once again raising list prices of their drugs. Of course they did. This time on more than 250 of them, uh, according to an analysis reported by Reuters. Uh, data examined by healthcare researchers firm Three Axis Advisors found that major drug makers, including Pfizer, GlaxoSmithKline, PLC, and Sanofi SA, oh, Bri- assholes of the world, uh, Bristol Myers Squibb, uh, Gilead Sciences assholes. Inc., Biogen Inc., all uh, yeah, hiked. Their, they all hiked their prices fuck. this week. The larger right. price tags applied to a range of medications from blood thinners to cancer therapies to treatments for respiratory conditions, HIV, arthritis, and multiple sclerosis. Stop with that shit. Uh, nearly all of the increases were below 10%. Oh, how nice. Right. How, how nice. Um, <laughs> right. Price hikes of less than 10% are relatively low. No, they aren't. <laughs> no, they aren't. No, they're not. Ten percent. I, I, I don't. I don't know what uh, what big what pharma drugs go for, but uh, they're not. They're not cheap. Um, let's see here. No. We, hey. We, okay. I got a quick story. Really right. quick. Okay, okay. Go. So New Year's Eve, right? I come home from work. I had to work till five. I get home. My son Matthew is in extreme pain. Like he's moaning. He's he's almost crying. My I'm like, what's wrong? He's like, my ear hurts. I'm like, oh, okay. You know, I'm uh-huh. like, what am I going to do? I mean, the kid's in extreme agony. The kid has no insurance, right? I'm talking about it in the chat. They're like, they can't refuse you. I'm like, I knew they can't refuse you for no treatment, right? They can't refuse you for right. no insurance, right? Right, right. So anyway, I take him in there to the, sac- the Sacred Heart Hospital Urgent Care. Okay. And, you know, we I have to tell a girl he has no insurance, and she's like, oh, no problem, whatever, blah, 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 you know, the, the receptionist or whatever. Right. And so then... We go into the thing, the room, and the, the PA, the physician's assistant, comes in, right? And she's like, blah, blah, blah. Oh, you have an external ear infection. Oh, well, I'm going to prescribe you two antibiotics. I'm going to prescribe you uh, moxicillin and some flocks and eardrops. You know, which flocks and eardrops are like antibiotic eardrops, okay? Right, right. And so, anyway, we go to fucking Walgreens, right? Uh-huh. We have to wait there for like half a fucking hour. All right? Right. To get the fucking goddamn thing, you know, because there's a line of people, right? Yeah. And so we get up to the thing to check out, and he has no insurance, right? And so the amoxicillin was $12, but the little 5 milliliter bottle of antibiotic eardrops, uh-huh. you know what? Wanna take a guess how much that was. I remember you saying it in chat. It was $179. $179 fucking dollars. <laughs> and I was like... We're not getting that. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, said, I looked at the guy and said, we're not getting that. Yeah, it's crazy. So Matt looked at me, he's like, oh, I'm like, we're not getting that. No way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, because I had some at home from, like, it's expired, but that stuff doesn't really go bad. No, I, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, maybe 10 years from now it might, but yeah. whatever. You know, it's still good. It was still, the seal, the packaging was still on it. It hadn't even opened ever. Wow, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I shook it up. I'm like, this stuff's still good. <laughs> you <Yeah. know? laughs> right. But I was floored. I could not believe that. I, I'm, like, I could not believe that. I'm not surprised at all. That was crazy. Yeah. yeah. All right, anyway, let's 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 okay. do this. Let's do this thing here and uh All right, let's do this. Thank you all for tuning in. We'll be back to say goodbye after the next set, but next song. Next song. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Do it, Betty. Oh, yeah, Betty Page shaking that thing. <laughs> Black Betty there, uh, Ram Jam <laughs> with, with Betty Page uh, dancing and uh, long there, having a good old time. All right, folks, uh, that's going to wrap it up here for us tonight on the first Freakers Ball Balls to the Wall show of 2020. Uh, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, we'll be back again next week with another show, another Freakers Ball for you. Um, but tomorrow, stick around, it, uh, or not stick around, but yeah, go ahead and stick around, whatever. Uh, at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern will be the Dark Table at its new time. I'll be on Sunday with the Blues at noon Eastern, followed by Hal Anthony at 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, good, good, good stuff coming up this weekend for you. Check the schedule. Oh, yeah, there will yeah. be there will be a Grim Leftovers coming on Monday. I, I took I, I took two right. weeks off took two weeks off, but it's time to get it get it back into gear. So uh, yeah, check the schedule there on reallybertybd.com dot com for all the rest of the shows on RLM Radio. Anything else? Uh, I don't think so. No, I you know have a good week, everybody. Have a good weekend. Rock on with your badass selves. Yeah, what she said. Peace.